And welcome once again to the Shadow Gallery. I, as I'm always, your host, James Donnelly. And tonight, well, we're going to continue our seven-part series, my seven-part series, if you will, uh, of the best non-comic book comic book films. So we saw earlier, we saw The Prestige and Equilibrium, two films that were uh, uh, my honorable mentions, if you will. Now, these, the, we're now getting into the top five, the best uh, non-comic book comic book films ever made. Here's number five. From 1987, from the director of Basic Instinct and Showgirls, Paul Verhoeven, we have Robocop. Let's take a look at the trailer. All Detroit has a cancer. The cancer is crime. We need a self-sufficient law enforcement robot. How long will it take? We can go to prototype within 90 days. Where are you from? Petro South. Welcome to hell. All units, all units, check your nine. Better alive, you're coming with me. Good night. As you can see, that is a recut trailer for the MGM DVD release of the film. Um, it's not as good as the original trailers, but the original trailers that I could actually get a hold of, the film, the quality of the picture was just kind of crappy. So, um, and also, I found it weird that they re kind of aged the film that they actually put it in the far future as opposed to this uh, originally took place in 1997 uh, when it was first made in 1987 they put it in 1997 not 20 odd whatever the hell it is um, so that I thought was a little bizarre um, but this is absolutely 100% comic book um, I mean, they even make references to it being kind of, you know, the kind of, you know, that Robocop is the kind of character that you used to read about in comic books. And it has, uh, A, it has some spectacular action sequences. It has a really wonderful sense of uh, kind of dystopian humor. Um, you know, this, uh, you know, the kind of recurring, you know, the... I'll buy that for a dollar. Nah, you know that guy is just—he's hilarious. I mean, it's—it. I mean, it's not. It's hilarious in the way that it's hilarious. The, the way that it's not hilarious. That the way that you know that's kind of the entertainment of the future, um, and uh, it's partly right. Um, so creepy, and you know, game. You know the the you know the commercials that are uh, you know that are peppered throughout the film. You know, for. Things like, you know, the Artificial Hearts uh, place and, you know, the, the game Nukem. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just funny. That's just funny shit. Um, like I said, and, but it has, more than anything at its core, it has a really great comic book origin story. You know, you have Alex Murphy, Peter Weller, who is, you know, he's a good cop, good family man. Um... And he uh, is 
essentially killed in the line of duty by a very, very some very horrible criminals uh, led by uh, Clarence Boddicker, um, uh, played by uh, Kerwood Smith, who is awesome. Um, so gleefully insane throughout the film, and then you know, obviously having this corporation that's actually running the running the police department in Detroit or old Detroit uh, before it becomes Delta City. Um, so it has you know all these things to say about uh, about society, about uh, um, progress, about uh, corporations, you know, and you know it's just. Uh, but you know, at, at the at the core of it all is this uh, you know this this formerly human man, who's now become this essentially you know a robot, but starts to rediscover human emotions within himself. Um, so it's kind of like this you know this patchwork of you know uh, this you know almost this kind of Frankenstein type of uh, deal, which is you know. He, you know, eventually has, you know, you know, there's a wonderful, you know, there's the wonderful scene. I'm sure that pretty much all of you have seen it. If you haven't, please get your ass off this chair and go see it right now. Um, but uh, if you can find the uh, Criterion version of RoboCop, uh, I don't know if it's even available anymore. But it's definitely, you know, it has a lot of bonus features, and uh, it has the original uh, cut of the film, which is, uh, which has the extra, you know, like 17, 18 seconds of film that it had to cut in order to get an R rating. Uh, you know, the uh, the death of uh, Kenny, uh, the the guy in the office who gets, you know, just totally. <laughs> <laughs> just totally destroyed by uh, the uh, the ED two hundred nine, and of course the really really disturbing uh, death scene of uh, Alex Murphy, and you know uh, you know Ronnie Cox as the uh, you know the kind of evil executive, and uh, uh, Miguel Ferrer as you know the kind of smarmy yuppie up and comer who you know was essentially responsible for RoboCop, but you know he's still a total douchebag. Um, you know, and it's it, Peter Weller really sells this film, and so does uh, Kurtwood Smith. I mean, he's just someone so absolutely devoid of uh, you know all you know. Uh, you know, human <laughs> feeling. You know, I mean, he's he's such a he's such an incredible psycho that he's just wonderful. Um, you know, his his character has no redeeming qualities whatsoever, other than the fact that he has you know this kind of joie de vivre uh, that uh, you know that you usually see in you know these kind of uber psychotic uh, criminals. So I mean, it has all of the benchmarks of great comic book storytelling, which is why uh, Robocop has come into, uh, you know, more, you know, has come into comic media. Um, there have been many comic books based around uh, Robocop. I think there was a cartoon for a while, um, but I might be mistaken. Um, but... Uh, you know, that's, you know, and then, you know, there's the whole thing with, you know, that Frank Miller, basically, you know, he wrote the script for, uh, he wrote a script for RoboCop 2 and RoboCop 3. Um, that's not quite true. He wrote a script for the sequel, um, but the studio completely tore it apart and made, you know, two incredibly horrifically awful sequels. Um so, uh, but, you know, he also, you know, he wrote, you know, they came out with a RoboCop versus Terminator comic, which was pretty cool. Uh, if you have the chance, check that out, just because it's a really interesting idea, because essentially uh, uh, it, um, the Terminator has come back in time because uh, RoboCop is actually the bridge between humanity and technology and what essentially is, enables uh, uh, Skynet to become and that's written by Frank Miller, and it has really great art by Walt Simonson. Um, 
but then you know Avatar Press came out with uh, what was essentially Frank Miller's definitive version of RoboCop uh, with their own comic series that was based on the screenplay that he had written uh, for the sequel. So um, it's you know, but back to the film, you know, Verhoeven and you know the people behind the film, like I said, ju just you know, have a really great idea and they just run with it and they go all out, you know, they don't pull any punches, they don't pull, you know, they pull out all the stops and they make, you know, rousing entertainment and, you know, just a really excellent comic book, non-comic book film. So that's it for this installment. Uh, we're going to come back with number four in probably a few days so or maybe even later tonight I don't know I don't really have much better to do right now so uh, we'll see about that so until then you know like dislike comment please if you've come see just just say hi you know give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down subscribe if you're new we welcome you uh, so uh, Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time for part four. And also, your other Shadow Gallery uh, content, your new comic books. You know, Occasionally, you're going to get some gaming news. You're going to get some movie reviews and movie news uh, specifically related to comic books more often than not. Um, so that's it, and see you next time.